Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday Q&A. With me, I have Lynette Zhang, our Chief Market Analyst. You guys all know. I'm Eric Griffin, President of ITM Trading. And for those of you who don't know, we take your questions, email to us at questions at itmtrading.com. Read them to her live, and you get a real, true, organic response. Yeah. David M. asks, Okay. How exactly would you buy a house or pay off a mortgage post-reset with gold or silver? Presumably, you would have to at least br briefly convert it into some sort of currency. Right, exactly. And that's the whole point. You can always convert any physical gold or silver into any currency, any good, or any service. So to pay off a mortgage, yes, you're going to need to do that with fiat. Same thing when you're paying your property taxes. And so you convert it, but it'll hold its purchasing power. And what might take, you know, who knows, 10 ounces of gold right now during the reset might even be just an eighth of an ounce or something like that. Who knows? But yes, you'd convert it into fiat. Now, on the other side of that, it depends. If you're going to purchase property and you want to use your gold for that, you may indeed have to convert that into fiat in order to do it, so into dollars in this country. But if it's a private party, they may not want all... They might be willing to take your gold and silver. Exactly, exactly. So if you're dealing with a larger entity, <clears throat> probably not. You'll have to do the whole transaction in, in you know, currency, the current currency. But it's easy enough to convert, so yeah. All right, Les M asks, if we are going into hyperinflation, can you tell me why real estate is going to go down and become a good investment? Well, because it's severely <clears throat> overvalued and everything, everything, um, as long as it's tangible anyway, the cycles always work from undervaluation to fair valuation to overvaluation to fair valuation to undervaluation, like a figure eight. Now, if it's, if it's not real to begin with, it can just go poof and it's gone. Mm -hmm. But real estate isn't going to go poof and it's gone. It's, it's one of the things that can actually survive regime changes. So, and the other thing is, it's valued in terms of those fiat dollars right now. So, in terms of hyperinflation, you know, it might look like more... Uh, speaking of numbers, but the currency has no value. So your gold gets reset in terms of those same dollars in this country, and it moves up somewhere near its true value while the inflation in terms of gold gets burned out. And in fact, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the gold uh, house ratio tomorrow. But that's that's why, because it'll burn out, because there won't be as many buyers. People won't be able to buy them and hold them. And think about all the debt. Right, so, so kind of when you're saying this inflation burning out thing, right? You're right. kind of saying, okay, well, the demand for people buying houses goes down. Dramatically. The supply goes up yep. dramatically, because people can't afford to anymore. Right. Right, and so when supply goes up, and demand goes down, prices go down in value. Now, they, now, what, now, to further clarify what you were trying, what you were saying, that you, you said that they might still go up in terms of the dollar the amount nominal, it takes to buy right. it, but in terms of gold, gold will go up. It will outpace the amount that the real estate goes up in terms of the fiat dollars. Correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, since we're talking about real estate, I'm actually going to do a whole series on it starting tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm going to be talking about like residential homes, but I'm going to be also then talking about commercial and multifamily. Um, and then what's happening, there's a lot happening in the real estate market right now. So I'm not sure whether it's going to be a two or a three parter yet, but it will be at least a two parter. Yeah. And, and we're going to start that series tomorrow. And you and Egon von Greyerts talked a little bit about that um, mm -hmm. in the uh, in the interview that you did. You should check out that interview that we posted up with Egon. It was a really good one. Um, but you guys talked a little bit about that, about how the value of the gold during this period of time rises and you know other assets drop, which then creates the opportunity that you're always talking about. Exactly. And you're going to see that in graph form. 
Um, okay, so <clears throat> Brian B asks, in a reset or hyperinflationary scenario, what are the indicators that gold has reached its peak and it's time to ex to sell? That's one part. Okay. And then or exchange into something else at the top. Okay. Well, first of all, if you get ever get out at the tippy top of anything or in at the <clears throat> very, very bottom, that piece is actually luck. But there are also those repeatable patterns. So part of the strategy is not necessarily looking for the absolute peak of gold in terms of that fiat money, but rather the, the accumulation patterns in the other assets with that generate income. So, I mean, I really don't care because what I'm doing is then trading something. I mean, we'll know when it goes past its fundamental value, but that's all about maintaining purchasing power. That, that's really what it is. I mean, who cares how many dollars it will go to when the dollars have zero value? A trillion times zero is zero. Look at Venezuela. So it's not really the peak, and you're, I guarantee you when you get to that level, you are not gonna wanna convert it into the local fiat unless you have to pay off a mortgage or something like that. It's for that utility. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm more in the strategy. It's not how high in terms of fiat can gold go. It's in terms of all assets. But just like you'll see this recognizable pattern here that's telling you that the smart money is accumulating, which is quite clear in <clears throat> excuse me, in the spot gold, the spot silver, as well as in the physical markets as well. We can see that accumulation pattern in gold and right. in silver, mm -hmm. okay? So that's really what I'm looking for as a big key. But also, when you get to a top, well, you know, in a reset, it, 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 it's a little different because you're resetting into another currency. Mm -hmm. But what will happen after that is you will see again that repeatable pattern. It'll top out and it'll start to go this way in terms of it. Maybe more abrupt in a reset because it depends on how much gold they're going to put to support the currency and inspire people to have confidence in it. But, but for me personally, since I'm executing the full strategy, and I know that there are going to be bargains out there. The gold will hold that value, and I'm and I'm more going to be looking for the cup formation. The, not the cup formation in gold, but cup formation in other and assets. It, right. right, it works the same. Because that's the whole point: is you want to transition out of your gold and silver when there's opportunities to buy other things on the cheap. Right. Not well, necessarily sell out of your gold and silver because you think you made a profit and put it into a. Mutual into the bank fund or, or whatever, right, 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 or hold it as cash, right? right? Because in a reset situation or hyperinflationary situation, you want to hold your gold throughout the whole trend cycle. You don't want to right. be holding on to any fiat currency. Yes, but I want to uh, correct one little thing sure. because where where I thought originally that I would, I mean, you should always own gold as the foundation of a portfolio. Depending upon the trend and where we are in that cycle, will determine the how much what percentage of your holdings are in gold and silver, but also what kind of gold and silver that you're holding. So that can vary. But where I would used to think that I would go pretty low on my holdings after the reset when the currency had the backing, <coughs> I, I don't think I'm going to do that now. I mean, I'm going to take advantage of the opportunities, but I plan on holding um, a larger position afterwards because what we don't know at this point is what exactly they're going to reset us into. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm very confident it's going to be some kind of digital currency, but we don't know um, yet what that backing looks like. It's still fiat, yeah. But digital. Right. Yeah. And so I'm always going to want to maintain my purchasing power as much as I can. Right. But it, it's, you point to something that I think is important for people to get to is that, you know, we don't really know exactly how it's going to unfold. It might, it might unfold that you get, you find some awesome opportunity that's so good to, that you can't pass up, right? And you might go, hey, that's, I got to get into that. And yeah, like might, that port in Greece. There you go. That was bought on a ton of debt. So, so 
it, you you don't know, but that that gold gives you that insurance policy and, exactly. and keeps your wealth intact so that you can make these moves when it's the right time. Yes, and and just again, stay tuned tomorrow because you're going to see the graph. So I'll I'll repeat showing you that pattern. Um, although this one is going to be on real estate, and you're going to recognize it looks pretty much like what we're seeing in gold and silver on the spot market today. Cool. All right. So David C asks. What is the market cap for gold and silver? So knowing that you didn't know that off the top of your head, right? I, I went and for physical gold and silver. That's why I have him around. I, uh, I looked up <laughs> like uh, I went to a couple of different websites to try to find out what the above ground total ounces of physical gold and physical silver. Um, and so I'm not exactly positive because some of this is speculation. Like I was looking at one of uh, Jam Bullion's sites about the, the ounces of silver, and they were ex ex uh, kind of extrapolating that they thought it was 3.5 billion ounces of silver. So if you take that and you multiply it times the spot price of roughly $15, um, the market cap would be $52.5 billion market cap. And on physical gold, the estimates I was getting was about 5.5 billion ounces um, at $1,400 an ounce. That's 7.7 .7 trillion. But I thought there was more above ground silver than there is gold, right? Well, here's the problem. So those uh, numbers gold wouldn't is even be right. Right, because gold is indestructible. Silver gets destroyed. Right, and missiles production. and stuff like that too. Right, right? so it's, it's kind of hard to tell. But that doesn't, neither one of that reflects the market cap because you have to take into consideration all of the derivatives, the futures contracts, as well as the other products, Wall Street products. So do you think you'd be able and to do a combination and figure out exactly what it would be? Uh, are, you, are you able to pull all the derivatives to see? Well, it, you know, probably one of the easiest places to pull it, huh. It would, take, it would take a level of work because I would have to go to the Bank for International Settlements, which anybody can do, biz.com, and they do a quarterly update on the derivatives. But in addition to that, you would also have to go into um, places like the CME for looking at the futures contracts. And remember, you know, each contract that costs 150 bucks for a bank, it's cheaper for the central banks, but that controls 500 ounces of gold. And we also know that they also sell a lot of gold and silver. You know, um, last time I looked, something like 200 days worth of production, right? Uh, and in addition to that, you would also have to go to the OCC where they break out the precious metals from the derivatives. So, I think it would so be... So she just told you guys how to do it. So if you think you have and the answer, probably more. <laughs> email it to us at questions at ITM Trading. Whoever is gets it right, we'll, we'll, pop, we'll, uh, we'll announce it on the next Q&A. How are we going to know who gets it right? We're gonna, it we're, is we're gonna... so opaque. I mean, that's the whole point. When I, yeah. when I, just in that one biz area, before they changed how they accounted for it, which is really what they do, mm -hmm. I personally saw with my eyes, I'm sorry it convoluted because I didn't really know how to capture it properly then, but I saw with my own eyes, I counted it out. This was according to the Bank for International Settlements. For every one physical ounce of gold that, has been that exists in ground or above ground. There were 62,000 ounces of digital gold. Wow. And that that's doesn't that, that's increased. only one place. In just in a couple of years. That's just one place. So I don't even know. I mean, if we I mean, could somebody's actually get gonna an accurate throw number. out right. Well, exactly. I would love I would love to know. Exactly. I would even just love to know cuz now that I'm looking at these numbers uh, isn't there more silver in ounces than there is gold? Physical uh, silver. I actually don't think so because, again, silver gets used destroyed. Up. Correct, correct. Because, yeah, I mean, Jam Bullion's a, a, a credible source, and I, that's where I got the well, 3.5 billion ounces but, of silver. But here's and the thing. And 5.5 billion ounces of silver of gold is correct. Right. So it just seems like that's wonky, though. Well, the know. Department of the Interior also publishes in ground and above annually. So the U.S. Department of the Interior publishes uh, a report 
on uh, above ground and in ground, both gold and silver, as well as other physical uh, metals. So we can pull that to see what they're saying, you know, as far as how much actually exists. But what website do you use that when we're calculating on the strategy? Uh, well, when I worked out, well, actually, the numbers I pulled were from the Department of the Interior for the strategy. And then I just uh, used the um, deck clock for the other part of that equation. Because with physical gold or, or, and or so silver. So you get the number of ounces from the Department of the Interior? Correct. Okay, so Correct. we'll look at that. I'll Correct. Tell us. We'll figure this out. Okay, <laughs> we'll move on to a different question. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is really interesting because what people really have to understand is that there is, I don't care what it is, in, in physical form, there is a finite amount of it. But in digital form, there's an unlimited yeah. amount of it. And these things, especially ones that are done over the counter, OTC derivatives, they're pretty much opaque because they're between so this two is why... or three entities. Who the heck knows? I mean, really, even if you go into all of those places, the reality is digitally, physically, yes, we can figure that out. Department of Interior gives it. There's, there's places that give that information. This is why gold's not at its true fundamental value, isn't it? Ex yes, Eric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, exactly why. So manipulated. Exactly. And it's easy to do and it's cheap to do. <clears throat> if you and I were going to spend 150 fiat dollars, we have to earn it. But the central bank doesn't have to earn it. They push a button. And for them, it's $110. Literally. $110. Well, how much is 500 ounces of gold at spot? Okay. And $110 controls that. You want to talk about leverage? Okay, so George S. asks, what happens when the interest on the debt exceeds the income needing to pay it? Well, typically that's bankruptcy. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And um, in the report that I did, maybe I should update this uh, one of these days when I find an extra minute or two. Um, when I did a report, and I'm pretty sure it was 2009 when I ran these numbers, 77% of the debt that we were servicing was compounding interest. And every time you hear a government say we're running deficits, what does that mean? That means that they're spending more money than they have coming in. So not only are they not paying for what they are spending, but they're also not paying the interest on that. Now, they make it look like they are, oh, the interest is only costing us, I don't know, whatever it is, $564 billion or whatever, whatever that garbage number really is. But that does not take into account all of the compounding interest, because if you're not paying all the principal and you're not paying all the interest, that goes on top and becomes part of the principal. So even the way they typically account for it is bogus. It, it, it hides the truth. But the good thing is, is you can have access to the underlying spreadsheets. So you can actually, with a couple of places, not as hard as, not as hard as uh, finding out all the gold and silver derivatives. Yeah. But you know there are a few places where you can go in and you can pull um, how much the government is spending. You can pull the government revenues. And you can certainly pull what the current debt level, I mean, it's over $22 trillion right now, not including the entitlements and all that stuff, right? So uh, actually, I, I think we're pretty much there. And what that really does is if, you're, if, all, if all of your income is going to service your current debt, then you have trouble growing more debt. And in a debt-based economy, it's a problem. That's where they're talking about modern money theory, where they could just spend without creating any debt. Although, what does that do to the value? We already know that even creating the debt removed, you know, really almost 100% of its value, and it only has value because you and I agree to work for it. You and I agree to use it for our bartering, and you and I agree to try and save it for use in the future. But when that confidence, and they knew that, they knew that when they created this, that people marry the legal money mm -hmm. of the state. 
I can't possibly imagine that the dollar's never going to go away. Look, it's lost officially. It's lost all of that purchasing power value. So you're just denying your personal experience. And the end result is that ultimately the confidence is lost. That's why they're always checking confidence because it's a con game. And con games require confidence. And as long as you think there's value in there, they can keep it going. All right, so I like this question. Ryan Jack asks, 40 ounces of silver or a half ounce of gold if someone were to buy today? Oh, I mean, what would I do if it yeah. were? Well, it depends on what I'm trying to accomplish. If I'm wanting to maintain my day-to-day -day living, hmm, that's kind of hard because... Um, Quarter ounce of gold, gold, 20 ounces of silver. Yeah, probably split something. Up. Yeah, split, split, it, split up, it up. Something like that because you need both. <laughs> you know, but it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. That That's what I always look at first. What are my goals? And then what is the best tool to support that goal? So I have them both. All right. Uh, let's see. Although I will say, I will say one more thing too. If you're executing, executing a strategy, it is much um, easier to come up with what 15 16 bucks an ounce on silver yeah than it is on 1400 bucks for the gold yeah you guys talked so, about that yes on that interview with egon too exactly so you know check out that interview it's good it answers a lot of these questions yeah um the tony b do you guys recommend a vaulting service if i'm go if if we're getting a vault i would say one near you if you can um you know, because like she always says, you want to have access. You want to have access to it because if you don't have access to it, you've taken away a lot of the reason to even hold physical, own physical gold and silver. It's an insurance, right? And the physical is the best insurance possible. So, you want it as close to you as possible, um, rather than, you know, someplace that's far away. Right. And, because and, in a crisis, how are you gonna how are you gonna get it? And some people ha have asked too, because uh, you guys talked about. I don't remember if you and Egon talked about that and somebody was a asking like, why mm -hmm. do you, well, why do you say in a vault far away is okay? Well, he, I didn't actually right, say he that, did. but he did. Right, right. That's and, his model. Yeah. And, and that's so, okay, he's a smart guy. And so in that case, you know, we would probably say it's better to keep it close to you and maybe hide it someplace, right? The, the difficult part is if you have it in your home, like Egon said, you know, right. you, you, you you could lose it. Somebody could come in, steal it, put right. you a gunpoint, you know, try to take it from you. Right. So your best bet then is to, I, I think, hide it really well somewhere near you. Right. I would default towards that than having it in a vault far away. Someplace far away. Right. That would not I, make I me feel know, comfortable. Right, because I don't know how I would be able to get it. And even for me, I don't hold, because I'm so visible and, and I really appreciate everybody's, you know, concern for me, which is really, really nice. I just am on a mission on this planet. Right. So I don't hold my gold at my home at all, but I could walk to my vault. Right. And I if, mean, be a little far, if you don't tell anybody do that you're buying gold and silver, right. You can hide it somewhere safe and no one would know. And we have a one sheet with some ideas. So if you'd like that, just you've been you've been given that precious. one before. Do you have access to it that yeah. we can put it in the description? Yes. Okay, cool. We can, but they can also call any of our precious metals consultants, our strategy specialists, and they can talk about it. You just want to be creative, you know, yeah. because because how many people in this country or actually in the whole world, other than India, maybe? I mean, there are some countries that are really attuned to gold, but you know, certainly in this country, I I think I read somewhere that there that if if every citizen in the US and I could be wrong about this but if every citizen in the if they divided up all the gold and gave it to every citizen it would work out to you know uh, less than the ring you know the wedding rings something like a 20th of an ounce or not even so you know nobody's going to go ah these people might have gold of course not but Leo G, you've asked this question a couple of times, but when you when you type it out the way you do, it's it's really hard to understand exactly what you're asking. Can you 
maybe we're Dude, not going to answer right? that one on on this one, but you can email it to questions at itmtrading.com and type it out more clearly of exactly what you mean by by what you're saying cuz you typed it out this, this way in the questions and it's hard to understand what you're even asking. Uh, um, I, I think I know what uh, this is Leo G mm -hmm. and I think I can I think I know what he's asking. What's bad bank? Okay, well, okay, the bad bank, they did this in 2008 and have been doing it like ever since, right? And what they well, do is they add, create another bank. Why don't bank. you read the question as you, th that way they know what you're answering. So why don't you read the question as <laughs> okay. you understand what he's asking. Okay, um, and what he's asking is, can I explain Deutsche Bank moving derivatives to a bad bank? So what they've done and all, and how does this affect the market, gold, silver, and us? All what right. is it, us or so, the U.S., or what is that? Well, pro may, I'll say us because that's okay. fine, because it's going, to have an, it's going to have an impact on every single person on the planet, no matter what. And, and it's, it's, it's like they know that this bomb is about to explode. Well, if it explodes inside of their current structure then there is no bailing that out. So what they're attempting to do, like they did during the crisis with all of those bad loans and those bad derivative bets, is they moved it off of their balance sheets. It doesn't mean that they still don't have the exposure, but nobody can see that exposure anymore. Now, I think what they're attempting to do is isolate it so if there's like an atomic explosion of the derivatives, I mean, in theory, if they have enough steel around it, it won't have an impact, but... So is what is bad bank? Is it a separate it, bank it's, yes, exactly. that they've moved these derivatives over onto? Like yes, a shell corporation almost? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yes, it's exactly What's it that. Called? Do you know? uh, well, it could be actually even called the bad bank. So I don't know. I'd have to see what they're naming it, but they are absolutely insolvent, and they and a derivative explosion at Deutsche Bank would take down the entire system. Mm -hmm. So what they're Which trying would to do make the price is create of gold and silver rise. exactly. Uh, so what they're trying to do is is put some form of firewall between there. But they also need to get their stock price up. So if they move those bad derivative but bets off their books, then that could also justify a higher stock price, which is down like 90% since the crisis or something like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's too little too late because you can't get rid of these derivatives. I mean, the legacy derivatives, which were uh, derivatives that were created prior to 2008, are all unique, and so they can't actually settle them out. Meaning, we have a bet just between you and me. Who else wants that bet? Mm -hmm. Nobody. It's just between you and me. That's a that's bilateral trade when they talk about that. In addition, there's trilateral, which means there's a bet between you, me, and Megan. We have a bet between the three. That's it. Who else wants that bet? Nobody. It's not relevant to anybody. So they keep paying the fees on these bets because there is no market for them. And we saw that in 2008. There were lots of bad banks that were created to take the bad loans off the books so it didn't look so bad. Now to take the bad derivatives off the books so it doesn't look so bad but it doesn't make them go away. And it really doesn't even insulate. So yeah, this derivative explosion is when you'll see gold and silver, it's gonna force the reset. And that's when you'll see gold and silver move toward its fundamental value, regardless of how many are, are higher because of all of those derivative contracts against them too. You know, what do I really think that we could see silver or gold at? I think, I, you know, this is going to sound outrageous. In terms of today's dollars. Because in fee, well, if it's exactly, hyperinflationary exactly, dollars, it could be it, billions of... Or trillions. Trillions of dollars it, it, an ounce. Right. right. I mean, that's what it is in Venezuela. Right. Right? Billions, yeah. So, you know, so exactly. In terms of today's fiat dollars, you know, I think that's what you and Egon were talking about, 10,000, right? 
At a minimum. Yeah. At a minimum. I think we're both in agreement if they did it today, it would be really closer to 50. Yeah. Um, so, but the question that we just answered is a good example. If you're submitting questions to us and you want them to be considered, make sure that you type it out in a way that it's where we understand what you're asking. Because if you don't, I just ignore them, to be honest. I, right. If I don't know what you're trying to ask me, I don't consider them to go on the show to ask. So just make sure that you're typing it out. Don't use abbreviations. Type it out. Let me know what exactly it is that you want to know. Cool? He said he answered the question. Okay, good. Awesome. Well, at the app. I mean, yeah, and, yeah, and you, she, you might, know, and she right. might know what right. you're trying to ask, but she doesn't review the questions. No. I do. Right. So if I'm seeing abbreviations or stuff that I don't know or you're not saying stuff out completely, then I'm not going to be able to articulate it to her. Right. She knows way more about this stuff than I do. I've been doing You're this since I was 10. Yeah. I mean, I mean, literally, that's not even uh, figuratively. Uh, seriously, on some level, I have been studying these markets and the tr patterns and the trends and the valuations since I was 10 years old. Yeah. And I'm almost 65. Reminders? Yikers. Yeah, what, what do you got for reminders? Oh, yes. Ah, yes. Okay. So this is well, next week. Is we like say that because we're excited. excited. <laughs> right, 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 right. But first I'll talk about this afternoon. I'm going to be on Minute to Midnight, which is always fun. And I know Megan years. will be happy to make next the arrangements week. to do that in a one-on-one -on -one in New Zealand, right? So we'll let you know when we're, when we're going to release that. But today, unfortunately, it's not going to be in New Zealand. However, you're on their channel, right? I'm on, yes. Night. So it'll be, it'll be there and I'll be in hot Phoenix. And then we have two coffees with Lynette. I'm looking at the calendar. That's why you see me looking off over here. We have two coffees with Lynette's next week. Well, I'm going to do both of them. One, I think we're going to release the following week. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, but that one the one that we are going to release, yes. The one that we're going to release next week is with Jim Rickards. I can't. I literally cannot wait. I'm so excited about yeah, this. That's awesome. I have, uh, I know I some have of you guys don't. so much. Some of our audience doesn't necessarily like him, but I mean, the guy's a smart guy. He's a very smart guy and he is an insider. So he gives you vantage points that you would not otherwise get. And I, and I do know that some of the issues that people have is because he'll give a date about what's going to happen. We're going to talk about this. So we're going to talk about this because it, in my personal experience, when I have followed up on what he said was going to happen, honestly, it happened every single time. But people always expect big, huge thunderclaps, right. even when I've given a date because they've given me a date, which is really what he does. He doesn't guess dates. He knows that if this meeting or this whatever is going to happen on this date, it's because he, they announced that that's the date. But remember, they don't want you to know anything about it until it's too late for you to do anything about it. So anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that and lots of other things. I'm like so excited about this interview. And then the other interview that Eric was referring to, although if you guys really want two coffees with Lynette released in one week, you know, we could certainly do that because I'm certainly working hard enough on both of them. Um, is with no, I Wayne. I like your idea because then it gives it, it gives it some time between right. the two. Right. Plus, Plus I really want to talk about that. If we need editing or whatnot, then we can do that. Right. But I also really want to talk about the real estate, you know, and, and that's right. at least a two-parter, probably yeah. a three-parter. I, I had it almost all done, but I had so much material and as I was reviewing it, I went, oh, no, no, I got to change this. There's, there's too much here. I want to just kind of dig into one area at a time. So, yeah. you know, um, but the other one's Wayne Jet, right? Yes, and you might have yes, and you might have actually recently heard him on uh Greg Hunter. Mm, that's right. And he talked about And the I think reason. it was you guys that told us to get him on get us on the channel, right? Exactly. So, he's coming on. I am about to start I'm just finishing up Jim's new book, and then my next one is is Wayne's new his book which is like that thick oh geez <laughs> so I, i'm reading a lot but we're we're getting all that together and we have a lot of other wonderful people coming up so get your questions in for either jim or wayne and if you want them to be considered make sure you put 
uh, Rickards in the subject line for any gym questions and Jet or Wayne Jet in the subject line for any questions that you want for him. So that way we know this is where they're supposed to be directed. Yeah. You can also submit them on Twitter and Facebook. So I have stuff up there so they can comment. Are you monitoring those though and pulling them and giving yeah. giving them to me? The best bet is yeah. just put them at questions at ITM training because then you know that I will see them. If you put them on there, you know, and you don't for some reason submit it or whatever, then we could miss the bullet on it. Yeah. Best is set them questions at itemtraining.com. Yep. So, I think that's it for today. Unless you guys want to hear about my ducks. No. It's okay. 35 minutes. Oh, all right. Oh, but I had a funny thing with the ducks this morning. You can tell so tomorrow. Cute. Okay, I'll, well, if I have time, I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, please keep in mind that wealth shields are made of physical silver and gold. Surely not derivatives or contracts or promises with the fingers crossed behind their back. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll maintain that value. Yeah, no. So until tomorrow, and I'm really excited about the one for tomorrow because you're going to see the patterns and wait till you see what, wait till you see what I found. Actually, I did want to say something about that. Okay, I'm not going to say too much, but I'm going to talk about it tomorrow that there's something that just occurred that is the first time that it has ever occurred since the Treasury started keeping records at, of, of, uh, of their uh, bond auctions, and that goes back to 1929. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Make sure you show up, and until then, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.